Gold hit an all-time high yesterday, reaching above 1250 US dollars an ounce. As some fear Europe's credit problems could lead to a double-dip recession. The metal rose for a third straight session, but the volatile copper market ended up for the first time in seven sessions on the back of a stronger euro. Now, there's still very much a mixed bag of opinions on where commodity prices will head over the next few months. Joining us now to discuss those issues is Jonathan Barrett, Managing Director of Commodity Broking Services. Jonathan Barrett, let's start with gold. Where is the demand coming from? Uh, Bridget, look, uh, gold, the general demand is coming from those investors that are obviously concerned about uh, what's happening in Europe. It, it's all part of a, a risk aversion trade or a package where people are, are buying US dollars and also buying gold. What's your prediction for the gold price? Well, look, it, it did ring the bell. I mean, we got as a high of about 12.52 last night. But then it really came off quite hard. And uh, we're currently trading around about that 12.30, 12.34 level. Now, I'm of the opinion that, that, that what's happening in Europe is under control. So I feel that these risk aversion trades are going to start to, to unwind. And as a result of that, I, I sort of feel that the gold sort of pretty much reached a high. So I'd be actually be taking profits uh, on my gold positions and my gold holdings because I feel that gold can actually come back. So overall, if you look at commodity prices overall, there's such mixed opinions on where commodity prices are going to go, if yeah. they're up or down. If you're reasonably bullish on the, on the European markets, does that also mean you're bullish about where commodity prices are going to go? Look, I think it's, you're dead right. It is a very hard um, decision to make where commodity prices are generally going to go. Um, I'm actually uh, quite mixed. I'm not 100% bullish on commodities at the moment. I really want to see some lead some lead out of China. We've got some very important data out on Friday, industrial production, retail sales, and that'll give me a clue, or it'll be the, the litmus paper test, so to speak, as to whether or not that growth in China is going to be with us, and as a result of that, commodities will be better bid, or commodities will come under pressure. I just missed that. When did you say that those figures are out? Uh, those figures are out on Friday. On Friday. Look, how significant is it that copper has risen for the first time in seven sessions? Look, I think it is because copper in itself has found a little bit of a low, right? And, and I think with that, that low in place, um, the market wants good positive economic data to come out. So I, I think it is significant. It's not yet out of the waters in terms of uh, a resumption of a positive trend, but, but it gives us confidence that, that we are reaching a level of where there is demand. There, there is a concern, I guess, in Europe over some of the copper concentrate uh, where we actually have uh, a premium paid. Now, that's also uh, underpinning that movement for copper. Now, if we look at oil, it's just above 73 US dollars a barrel. Obviously, it's dropped from, I think, around uh, just over $85 a few weeks ago. Yeah. Now, is this due to the rising US dollar or to supply? Look, I think it's got a lot to do with supply at the moment. Crude has found a low around that US $70 a barrel, um, and we feel that, that it should provide some support. We've got some very important infantry uh, due out tonight, which expects a draw, and if we expect that draw on crude, then that will support prices higher. So, if anything, I feel that we've, we've reached an intermediate low for oil, and I would not, not be surprised to see oil start to gravitate to the top side. Now, analysts watching the metals exchanges in New York and London don't believe that metals prices will necessarily follow the asset price implosion on the equity market. So what's propping them up? Look, I think it's, you, you reach a level with a lot of the metal prices where you know, supply and demand um, really supports the prices. Um, we still see that there's a lot of growth. And, and as I said, the litmus paper test will be what happens in China. And, and, and we see a lot of growth still in China. Um, and, but the key is that China is actually trying to slow down due to some of their own uh, concerns, their inflationary pressures. Uh, but you do find with a lot of the metals that they reach this level where supply equals demand, and as a result of that, the price sort of steadies off and, and, and as we said, finds that equilibrium point where any form of economic growth will see prices a lot higher. We mentioned the oil price. Now, it has dropped from around 85 to 73. How much damage has the BP oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico done to the price of oil? Look, I, I don't think it has uh, done a lot of damage to the oil price, but what it has done, which I think is really interesting, is it's caused the administrations to rethink uh, the alternative energies like natural gas. And I think this is one of the keys because natural gas has, in fact, uh, just since the, the end of May, rallied by over 25% 
which has been absolutely huge news. And this is on the back of the Obama administration saying, well, there is a concern on the Gulf. Deep water drilling is a bit of a worry, but we've got to look and pave the way to cleaner alternatives. And as a result of that, we're seeing people focus purely on natural gas as a cleaner alternative. So I think what it's done is it's actually put our attention to cleaner resources, and as a result of that, we've seen a very large spike, and that's a large spike in natural gas. Another big thing to watch, or two big things to watch, China and uh, the US. Jonathan Barrett, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Bridget.